Yeah, well, should we get him when he comes through? Just say, just go straight into it. Yeah. Should we get him to make a guest appearance here? With that. No. What is that? I don't know. I found it upstairs. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. all right. We're waiting, waiting for you. Don't worry, Gary. Wait there. Let's serenade him. Ready? Come, come on, come, come on. on, come on, come on, come here, come here. No, we don't want to be in your come gang. Here. Don't worry. We've come got here. our own gang. Well, that was meant to be our intro for <laughs> <laughs> episode sixteen. Gary Glitter was in the building, but unfortunately he got shy. Yeah. So he's done a runner. <clears throat> so that was our little comedy moment there. We had rehearsed that for at least a minute while he walked to the toilet with his dodgy hip. Well, he's getting old, isn't he, bless him? <laughs> I've never seen him move so quick. <laughs> not, really. <laughs> not when he thought it was recorded. No, so we've got a replacement. Anyway, we've got that there. That's, a, that's his replacement. What is this? I don't know. I found that upstairs. Someone got bored, obviously. I don't know. Is it Wilson? Do you, do you talk to it when you get lonely up there? <laughs> if anybody know, could anybody claim this? It's like <laughs> it was, I think it was meant to be for hats. That's what it was meant to be. It's a drag and queen hat. Basically, dummy. it's fallen down the stairs that many times. It's got brain damage, and then someone must have been that bored. They've put makeup on it. Well. Strange things happen in the tackle shop. What about the tackle shop? Anyway, before we get on to uh, topical things, let's talk about um, stickers. Oh, yeah. I will show you these in a moment. I'll take a close up. But we have one here, worn by... Yes. Mr. Bates here. Would I've you... been royally chip shopped. <laughs> I've had a I've had a bit of a nightmare week fishing, but they are. It's, uh... I've got it this way around, look this way around. Oh right, okay. So what you've been chip shopped? I've been battered both sides. Have yep. you? Yeah. Here are the stickers. And to all my teammates, they've they've bloody loved it, to be honest. <laughs> and the thing is you can't get say anything back because <laughs> You just can't. You just got to take it. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. We'll get on to the battering later. But yeah. um, the uh, the Spaniard Marcus Aurelius made these for. He did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He should get two of these. I think from Wednesdays. Did he get battered on Wednesday? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. But we had a good day. We caught plenty of fish. So if you come into the tackle shop, you need to fess up if you've been battered. Get a sticker from I Alex think, and I proudly wear it. I think there's one it. here somewhere with Matt Page's name on it. I don't know, but, you know, I see the results and he made me feel better. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it's time to step up. If you come into the shop, you've got to fess up. Tell Alex you've been chip-shopped. Wear your badge with pride. Yeah. We've got a few. Uh, I'm sure the Spaniard will get a few more for us. So, uh, yeah, things are evolving. It's all going a bit... Funny and weird, but it's good. It's all banter, isn't it? It's the highs and lows of match fishing. Well, yeah. Talking of things going well, um, it's Oggy and Steve. I was talking to those two. No. Gen Paul Oggles. Oh, well, Pogo, yeah. Whatever, Oggy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oggy, Pog what did you call him? Pogo. Pogo, yeah. Paul o Oglesby. Paul Oglesby mm -hmm. and Steve... Lane. From... Boston. Yeah, they were, they've been here a long time today talking to us about the podcast and things. Yeah, which is yeah, great. Good, yeah. And they were giving us the lowdown of when they started fishing mm. and how people like um, Derek Skinner mm -hmm. taught them and other guys. And that was really interesting. Old Harlequin days. They were a big team from that Boston area. Yeah. Lincolnshire area, yeah. Big That's team. great. And it's the power of the podcast. So it's kind of... Because Derek got in touch and Cookie, Mark Cook. Yeah, yeah. And See these Chris as well, was it? <coughs> Chris there. Hodson, yeah. yeah. You've got to remember, I don't know these guys, Alex knows them, so that's why I'm kind of struggling a bit because I can't put names to faces yet. But because these guys reached out, oh, October time, perhaps yeah. a bit earlier, then obviously we kind of like got those guys involved with the podcast. And it's great because it's now, we've spread a bit further to, into Lincolnshire. Mm -hmm. And really, this is just trying to reiterate what we're trying to do. I was talk, talking to Steve and Oggy, Pogo, Paul. 
Yeah. <laughs> and we were saying, basically, we're taking the place of the local newspaper. Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you... The, the match results don't exist anymore in no. the local, in the local no. rag, and even in the regional ones as well. So that's that's one of our roles, really, doing the podcast, is to just kind of spread the word of... Well, it brings everyone's attention to certain venues, you know. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's time we went even further. You reckon? Yeah, because we're on the up. I'm, I'll, I'm going to cut me short if I'm boring people here. <clears throat> Last week, I everyone... <laughs> I asked everyone to give us a thumbs up. Another 10 minutes, I probably will be going like that. <laughs> or a comment. But this is important, because I message you, because I'm very boring. And I checked the podcast. It goes out on a Wednesday morning, and I looked on the Thursday morning, and we had nearly, I think it's about 600 views already. Mm-hmm. No, that, I lie. By the Thursday morning, we had nearly 1,000 views, and we had around 100 thumbs up. And I think the algorithm was pushing it harder mm-hmm. because we had the interaction from the viewers. As long as you know what you're on about. Uh, th- this seems to be the case. So, first of all, thank you for everybody who sent a comment in or put a thumbs up or did both. Can I ask everyone to do the same again this week? Because it does make a massive difference to how things that I don't understand work, mm-hmm. like the social media. And the further afield we can spread the word of the podcast, the more we can help angling clubs. Yeah, yeah. Tackle shops who are doing promotions, fisheries, the whole caboodle of angling. And this is what I was talking to Steve and Paul about, is that they feel like now, in their area, it's got a resurgence again from all the hard yeah. work that Derek's done, yeah. Cookie's done, Chris Hodson, and we've helped. because we've. And they say, just by highlighting these matches, it's helped put, give it another push. So if you know people or you're organising uh, matches or events... That they don't even have to be local to Finland, anywhere in the country. We'll give it a plug because we are getting quite a, a wide audience, and obviously we just like to help out by announcing what you're doing. So just get in touch with us. The best way is through the YouTube comments, um, or you can message me, um, Andy Page on Facebook. In, Not many. No. No, we get seven or eight comments. Just very like, polite. All women, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> that one. We get the odd sex bot that joins in, but uh, that's a different story. No, but it's just, we need to know. We need feedback, and we need people to contact us. So you can contact us through the YouTube video comment section. Find me on Facebook. Find Alex with Tackle Shop or his Facebook. Loads of ways of contacting us. We'll get back in touch with you, and we'll try and get you mentioned regularly on the podcast, and we'll try and spread the word that way. So I think we have a role to play that way as well. But keep putting the likes on everybody, and we'll just see how far we can go with this. Because, like I said, it's the third year we've been doing it. We enjoy doing it, and we feel that we have a role to play, particularly locally, of sort of telling everybody what's yeah, going on. Yeah, this year, with the way it's been fishing, it's like Benick March, Benick March, Benick March, Ramsey St Mary's with Ramsey, and yeah, a couple of different venues for Whittlesey, and seems a bit the same old same old but that's only because that's where the fish are but obviously years before we've covered everywhere you know there's no whole beach matches now St Neats don't seem to be running any matches at the minute I haven't seen anything there's no St Ives matches so we are sort of limited to what we, we can report on but you know that is what we've got to work with at the minute isn't it? So we can only do what we've got locally that's why we need um, some fish we need some fish yeah. we need some decent weather yeah Oh, Lord, we need, um, yeah, going back to what I was saying, just get in touch with us, no matter what, where you are in the country, mm. we'll give it a, a plug, you never know. But the channel's growing, that's why I mention it, we are getting more and more yeah. views all the time. And I know talking to people in different forms of angling, even though we're not getting massive views, the right people are watching, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. So, we're obviously doing the right thing, and, it, and, and you guys are finding it fun listening, so we'll just keep going and... Uh, See what happens, see what happens yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a journey, but it's a team. The thing I was going to say, it's a team effort. It's yeah. not just me and Alex. While Alex is here, there's people in the shop doing yeah. the shop while he's down here. I go home and edit it all, but that's just a small part of it. The, the bigger team is everyone watching, yeah. who you, you're part of it. Yeah. And this is the important thing. Everyone's part of this. It's a bit like the Fenland Guardian scheme. It's not mine. It's not one or two angling clubs. It's the whole community. And the podcast is the same, yeah. really. But we're the, we're the people 
doing it, but we want to represent you guys from what you're doing in the community. So get in touch. We'll get you on. We'll plug things. We'll see what we can do. Mm. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Wonderful. I can take the mick out of you now because I feel like I'm not. Uh, okay. I blanked last Wednesday. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, but you're sat on a lake <coughs> on your own, didn't you? you know? I was going for a British record fish, but there we go. It's a different story. Yes, didn't catch one. Had any big decent fish lately? Yeah. Yeah? Well, you can tell us, can you, or not? Or no, not really. Oh. I'm sure I see a picture on your Instagram or... Which one? The big perch? Yes. I had a five pound perch. Mm. It's the second one I've had this season. That's not bad, is it? No, that's... I'm not a perch angler. Um, but All I... you've done is fish for perch. I've got in... <laughs> I used to catch big... Decent perch as a bycatch and not really appreciate them, so I'll get the odd three pounder and go, oh, I fluked it. Oh, yeah, bragging, are we? No, that's what happened because it's just the way you fish with lures, basically. Yeah. Um, I used to try and catch big perch on lobworms back in the day. Uh, lobworms? Yeah, on the, under a float, just down the side of boats and things, as, as you do. But the last two or three seasons, I've just kind of, so for two or three months, I kind of get into my perch head on because I'm not very good at catching them. And I've got better, yeah. obviously. Not being big well, it's any, like, like if you're not catching fish, you can't learn anything, can you? And, no. But when you're catching fish, you can go, you can learn. It's like exactly. I've you caught can't them. make bites if you're not getting bites. I've you? caught them on so many different methods. Yeah. That's the other thing I wanted to do. I, I don't like using a drop shot, but I've had some big ones on drop shot. I've caught them on creature baits, on shads, on crank baits, which I wasn't very good at because right. I always thought it was a bit of a. So what is a crank bait then? Because I am. Um, yeah, no, I don't a know. Plug. Right, but why is it called a crank? Because you're cranking it in. Right. You're making it die. Right. So, in my head, I thought, oh, this is just boring. You just chuck it out and reel it in. Mm. Isn't that pipe fish in general? No. no. What, you see, I had the wrong mindset with crank. It was only with crank baits. No, because what I've learned now is each one's very individual because mm. some of them are just awful. And you, 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 get, you buy them, chuck them out, and they run offline. So, you have to tune them. Tune. Tune. That's proper fenny. Yeah. Tune. But you don't want to get it perfect. I'm giving yeah. away a few secrets here because it's too perfect. Right. You want it to be a bit erratic but not fly off at angles. Mm. And also, you want it, you want, you've got to learn because they say it dives down to 10 foot, 12 foot. No, they don't. No? No, they do. They all, again, they, so you, can, you have to learn which ones do which. And I know now. Trial and error. Trial and error. Which ones are really good, which ones are okay, and which ones just need thrown away. So I bought a load of different makes, models, sizes, and I, I had a conscious effort for the competition fishing for about a month. I just crankbait fishing, just trying to get better mm. at using them. And at first, I found it really boring, but then I thought, OK, no, I'm going to stick at this. And I did it with all the methods, so, oh, yeah, I've caught on everything. The only thing I haven't really caught on is a Ned, if I don't like using that either. It's a Ned? Oh, What's yeah, that? it's... So we have, like, a flat... Imagine a jig. Yeah. Jig hook. Rather than having the round weight at the front, it's, so it's chopped off, so it's a flat base, so the hook sticks up. Why? So your, your lure, your plastic imitation, whatever you're using, is straight up. So this thing is just straight off the oh, bottom. Yeah, it, yeah. You think about it, think, oh, what? So it looks like it's nose diving. Imagine a, f a small fish. Yeah, yeah. It, well, you ever seen roach when, I don't know if they're sleeping or whatever. Yeah. Torpid. They go in, and you keep it, they're like, they're like, I don't know, they like float up with yeah. their head down and just like, what are you doing, mate? Do you know what I mean? So this Ned, is it dead? Is yeah, it like, this like, Ned rig. So is that to imitate that? Is I it think right? it's imitate lots of things. Right, let me go into fly fishing yeah. for a minute. When you fly fish, a lot of your flies don't imitate one thing. Right. They imita imitate a range of things. Mm -hmm. So the fish will take it because it you're covering your bases basically. Yeah. Some flies are very specific, but lots of flies are. Like hair's ear, very good fly, imitates a lot of fly life coming off, but right. not one thing in particular. So when you're using something like a Ned rig, a lot of the baits you use will imitate a, a range. So it could be a fish, it might be a worm. Mm. Just hang so it just sits up. Yeah, but you, yeah, but you. The, the trick is to actually how you retrieve and pause these things. So you've got Cheb rig is completely different. You can make these things bounce bounce up in the water. Right. I got really good at that by giving it a real hard half turn of the reel and it makes it pop up this is going to be even sadder in a minute I'll tell you how I found out about all these things Ned tends to be a bit flatter and a bit duller 
You something called a Texas rig. Again, that's better for going through weed. Right. I know all this because I did a tank test. Right. This, yeah, is, but... this is how far I got into it. Yeah. I filled up my bath, put a GoPro in it. I put a very small weight this on. This why they call you GoPro, Andy. <laughs> of all the different things last year. With Tom Moyers Bates. Yeah. I was just doing some little videos for him. And I started watching what each rig did. And I thought, how? It, they all behave differently, mm. even in still water in a bath. Yeah. And I thought, blow me, I didn't realise that. So, big learning curve. And I thought, okay. So, if I'm chucking out on a big river, big body of water, the movement's probably going to be exaggerated because there's... There's current, there's the movement down there, there's weed, there's rocks, there's sand. There's... Do you know what I mean? So by visually seeing these things, I thought, oh, that's interesting. So now what I'm trying to do is visualise my bath when I'm using yeah. these things and just learning. And I've had a... Well, it's I'm... confidence as well, isn't it? You know how that lure performs. When you pause or and suddenly you get this or bang, as this four pound perch has nailed it, you think, oh, I'm doing the right thing. So, so basically, that, do you catch them on that Ned rig then? I've caught them. I haven't had any big fish off it, but I've caught loads of fish off it from the rivers. So, so that like basically comes up and down again? No, that would be... A, it tends, the Ned is kind of like visual in their face all the time because it's, it's bolt upright. So right. you, if you drag it and pause, it's very effective, particularly on the drains. Because mm -hmm. um, it's got an exposed hook... It's very easy, it very easily snags debris. Right. So you have, to, if you, you have to know what bottom you're fishing on to know which is the better or more appropriate approach. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like in a snaggy swim using a Ned, unless you're, if you're fishing in a very tight area, say behind a boat and you think there's a perch there, a Ned rig's perfect because you can just hold it and just twitch. Are you with me? Because mm -hmm. it will stay in the area. Yeah. And it's, it's just in their faces. And you'll get, if a fish is, hung, is a, a responsive, you'll probably get a, a response immediately on it because it's, it's in its face. Right. But if you're covering a, lar a large area, say I'm fishing a weedy stretch of drain, the last thing I'm going to be chucking out is a Ned rig because as soon as I move it, it's just going to catch in the weed. That's when you go to a Texas rig with a very light weight, with a, right. a hook that's hidden in the bait. It gets very, this is where it gets really interesting because you then use different hooking arrangements depending on what you're fishing through. So the bass anglers in America are experts at this. They fish through really thick cover with heavy Texas uh, weights and hooks in their plastics and they flip it into the weed where the bass are. Boom. So it, it, it is amazing. There's so much to learn. <clears throat> There's no time to learn it all. So going back to your initial question, I've had some clonking perch and I've been able to catch them on loads of different methods. So it's been, it's been a, it's just an amazing learning curve. So I like to think I'm a very accomplished pike angler in all, all the different facets of bait fishing, lure fishing, yeah. and fly fishing. So this has been like another little voyage of discovery. But what I've started to do is use some of these tactics, lure fishing for pike when they've been really negative, because this is quite a negative approach. And you think, hold on a minute. Yeah, so it's been, very, very it's very similar to match fishing you're just refining what you're doing to try and suit the circumstances yeah, on the day different conditions yeah yeah but it's been amazing and it's just been a yeah the last two or three months have been well, i started last year doing it, so i suppose it's been the last year or so amazing learning curve what i now need to do is perch is my weakness in competitions this is why i did it all initially so to proof is in the pudding this this year, next season coming, I've got a lot of competitions coming up mm. and I've been struggling with the perch. So now, hopefully I can transfer all that knowledge into the right time, location or whatever, and the perch won't be a problem. So touch wood, we're getting somewhere with it. But it's, it's like all fishing. Every time I go, I come back and go, God, what did I learn? And uh, you learn so much, don't you? Yeah. What you were telling me earlier, mm. upstairs this, this morning, about how people next to you were learning stuff. Well, everyone learns, don't you? But that's what you do as a good angler, isn't yeah. it? If you don't learn, yeah. the, if you're not learning all the time, no. you're not really making the most of things. So, anyway, I don't know how we got onto that at all. I don't know, I wish I'd never asked now. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Can't stop him. Are you still <laughs> awake? Just... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, dear. So what were we talking about? I have no idea. 
we were just starting off, weren't we? Mm. We were on about chip shop and uh, yeah, the Boston go. Massive. Mm. So you got a rant this week or not? I have a little rant. Go for it. I'm going to thank somebody. His name's Colin Dodd. Do you know him? Colin Dodd. The name rings a bell. Colin Dodd. Colin sent me... I'm just checking I've got his name up. No, I have. Colin sent me a message. He must have listened to the podcast. So, Colin, thank you for that. He sent me a link to the Environment Agency's um, statistical... I'm going to give it the correct terminology. He sent me the, inf- the link for the EA for basically... It was their fisheries report for last year. So, basically, what they spent all their money on. So, because we said in the podcast, you asked me, what do they spend rod licence money on? And I went, I don't know. So, Colin sent me this link, which is great. So, I had a little look at it, and... Uh, yeah, it just it just reinforced exactly everything I've been saying. They, in the report, they had an upsurge in rod license sales last year, 24 million, mm. and they break down what they they break detailed breakdown of what they spent all the money on. But it just reinforces what I've said. In my view, the Environment Agency should only really be concerned with fisheries and protecting fisheries. They do not need to do anything about promoting angling. I'll tell you why, Alex, because I did a bit... I looked on YouTube, and the Environment Agency have a YouTube channel. They've got 5,000 subscribers, which for a national... The National Agency for Running Fishing is poor. Mm-hmm. Really poor. You go on Carl and Alex, or TA Fishing, they've got, like, 230,000 subscribers. So who are the bigger influencers? Yeah. It's a no-brainer. So the Environment Agency, they shouldn't be even concerned about promoting angling. It doesn't need doing through that sphere. Everything's changed, doesn't it? The world we live in now is driven by social media. We were t- that's what I was talking about the podcast mm. 10 minutes ago. So, in, <laughs> in my opinion, not saying I'm right, but I'm always wrong as an ex-school teacher. No, I didn't mean that. But in my opinion, the Environment Agency have got a limited amount of funds. Very precious money, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Particularly in the climate we live in now. And austerity and everything else that's going on. And the rising in bills that's coming up with everything. The Environment Agency have really got to look after their funds. And to me, they they waste so much money in areas that don't need funding. The the areas that need funding are looking after the fisheries and the fish. Mm -hmm. And providing sport for anglers who pay a rod licence, in my opinion. Pollution comes under that, because Mm -hmm. it's looking after the fishery. Apart from that, phew, Angling Trust the same. I know you can't I'm not blame the Angling Trust for fishery offences, but they run their volunteer bailiff scheme. Again, structurally, I mentioned this months ago, structurally inept. You need thousands of volunteers to run that structure, not 600. Angling Trust, I was talking to the guys earlier, need to push all of their focus on the grassroots of the sport, youngsters, because we haven't got the youngsters coming through. We haven't got sport. Mm. And it's these fundamentals that frustrate me when I see these big organisations not doing these things. Very frustrating. I mean, I can't give too many details, but to reinforce what I said about last week about constant uh, incidents we have. When I finished doing the podcast last week, I got home and I got a message from one of, uh, one of our local guardians. I'm not going to give details because this is still ongoing, but men have been seen in an identified vehicle setting deadlines in daylight on a local waterway right? because they know nothing's going to happen. The same vehicle has been seen on another waterway every day for the last three weeks, probably doing the same thing. So uh, that's obviously been reported, has it? Or? Yep. Hmm. And this is what I'm saying. There is this constant trickle of problems. Now, environment agency, you need more fisheries enforcement officers. This is the most simplest thing on the planet. The likes of Alec Thompson, who are superb, can't do it. There's one man. Two men aren't enough. There was two. There's one operational at the minute. We need ten. Hmm. The rod licence money needs to go into fisheries enforcement because not only will they be enforcing the waterways, they'll be checking on pollution and all these other things. And this is just a great use catchment because you made a very good point last week about different regions doing different things. So I'm going to put a link for Colin's message, not his message to me, but the link to the EA Fisheries report in the description for this podcast so everyone can see it because it's only fair. And it's very detailed. 
which is credit to the Environment Agency, but I, I, I've learned in life, if you try and justify something, you've normally got it wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you get things right, you don't have to justify it. So they go into great detail, but it just shows how much money is spent on other factors. And I think we've got a real problem. <clears throat> if we're not careful, we could have this avalanche of nothing in our fisheries. And we're getting, I think we're getting close in certain places because of fish removal, predation, water quality, all these things that attack the ecosystem that we love and enjoy, and it needs protecting. And that's the organisation that have the, um, the legal authority and the, the paid interest to do. So a little rant there, but I just wanted to mention that, that it is constant. There's lots of things that I don't mention on the podcast that we know about because we're hoping there's going to be prosecutions and it seems most of the times there aren't, so we don't mention them. But because I know a lot that's going on, I get very frustrated because it doesn't ever seem to stop. It just keeps going. So big problems. And talking to the guys who drove down from Boston, it's the same in their area, if not yeah. worse. Yeah. I mean, in Lincolnshire, uh, they had, at one point, they had zero fishery enforcement officers. This was about two or three years ago. Then they had a big push, and I think they then had four... But their role wasn't fisheries enforcement. It was something else within the, their job role. But they had given them, they, they trained them up to be fishery enforcement officers as well. There's a guy called Jake. I can't remember his surname. He was very good. Yeah, yeah. He helps. I know Jake. Yeah, he come here and did some netting with the oh, Tid boys. Was, yeah, he's, yeah. but he's actually, this, I think he's on the fishery science side. Mm -hmm. But he does that extra to help out. Mm -hmm. And I know he did a talk um, at Boss there, Bottisham, with... Um, the CAMS region of the PAC last October, explaining about a lot of the issues the Lincolnshire drains have with mm -hmm. lots of natural occurrences and pollution and all sorts. Yeah. So he, I mean, people, who, yes, the people who work for the Environment Agency at that level are incredibly committed. Mm. I, I'm not having a go at those people. Mm. I'm having a go at the people who are the managers a lot higher up who aren't, who aren't identifying problems and aren't uh, apportioning money to the right areas. And we're your customers, and you're not listening to us. Mm. Who, who do the EA, who, who's, who controls the EA? Do DEFRA, do they have to report back to them? Are they self-regulatory? I don't know. I suppose it's government, isn't it? I don't know. Who regulates the EA? Who, reg who regulates the EA fisheries side of things? Do they do it themselves? I don't know. You know, they should get someone like me, who's a pain in the ass, mm. <laughs> to come in and have an honest, unbiased... Look at what they do. But it's frustrating because um, you see all the hard work that people do on the you know, boots on the ground, but you just think, oh, if we had five Jakes and five Alex Thompsons, it'd be fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And also, they're going out on their own. Yeah. In the current climate we live in, with all the health and safety, is that really safe? Shouldn't they be in pairs? Well, I think that's half, another half the battle as well, isn't it? Yeah, so I did have a little bit of a run. That's, that's the thing. It's, it's never going away. And what I worry about the most, Alex, is I have been fishing for... Oh, crikey. Oh, long time. Long time. I would say I started when I was six. I was trying to do the maths quickly in my head. Oh, I'm 53 in March. There you go. Bloody hell. Is that all you are? <laughs> I had a hard paper round. Mm -hmm. You've never done a paper round. Oh, I did, mate. And I cleaned floors in a supermarket and did all sorts. So how many years is that? It's 46, 47 years. Yeah. And I've loved it. I've had a... Fishing is a passion, as it is for you. Hence why we do this. The next lot of generation of kids, are they going to have the same opportunity? And that's what worries me the most. Mm. Because I've had a brilliant time. I've, had, I've met so many lovely people through angling. Apart from yourself. No, we have. Look at the things we do. Feelings mutual. <laughs> but you do. You, you meet so many lovely people. But will it exist in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, 40 years' time? I hope so. We've got an overpopulated island. The resources are being hammered left, right and centre by so many things. If it's not looked after well, now... <clears throat> I think... That's going back to the... Uh, the same old, you know, with commercials, isn't it? You know, people love her or hate them. You know, some people hate them with a passion. Was that the Environment Agency? 
No, it's... Alex, shut page up for Christ's sake, he's boring. No, it's someone else probably trying to rib me for getting chip shot, but... Yeah. yeah. But no, on a serious note, in 40 years' time, will angling exist? Don't know. If PETA get their own way? You know, mm. they get into power through different political means? It's all, it, it worries me because we're losing the traditional values of our country. Mm-hmm. Um, of which hunting is one of them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we do it in a different way now to conserve resources, mm-hmm. catch and release. However, we're catch and releasing. <laughs> Other buggers aren't. Mm. And, do you know what I mean? And, yeah. And, it's, it, it is, and it is becoming a big problem. And, and that's why I worry is because I, would, I, won't, I won't see it because I won't be here. But you'd like to think there's a legacy you've left behind. And... Uh, that's what I really do worry about. Anyway, it's a bit of a sombre thought, but just a, it's a bit of a reality check, really. And that's really where we all need to come together through one voice and give the, author- the authorities that make the decisions, give them a bit of a, a problem to solve, and we do it constantly. Right. Yes. I will stop. Oh, OK. So what do you want to do next, then? Um, do you want to tell us about anything that you've been doing? Um, well, the wheels have fallen off the bus this week. <laughs> Are you going to go straight into Sunday? No, no, no. Well, no, I just, I don't know really. I've had a a different week of late. I've, I've been having the rub of the green, I suppose, for a little while and catching a few fish. And, and uh, Sunday was... Um, yeah, proper proper uh, wheels have fallen off, but um, yeah, it's fishing, isn't it? You you're only as good as your last match, and I can honestly say Sunday was a bit frustrating. And after the match, I was just annoyed, really. You you're a it. broken man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I um. I feel your pain though, because going back to what I was saying, all that perch fishing I've been doing and catching some yeah. clunkers. If I then can't replicate a part of it in these comps. Yeah. It will be a little bit of a hollow yeah, yeah. victory for myself. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying. So you had the March Open on the old course of the knee. Yeah, so we had March Open Sunday. Um, we'll talk about, well, yeah, March Open Sunday, obviously not any pegger. There's loads of anglers down. I heard it was a very it. strong field, wasn't very, it? Very, yeah, I mean, it's a decent, decent, uh, it's a very strong field anyway, but it's exceptionally strong field when the Winter League final's coming up. Um, you know, you've got England's finest coming down. It was who's who of natural venues. Yeah, it? it is. Yeah, and and um, only so because the Winter League final is, apart from the Division One National, is the biggest team competition there is. So yeah. that's why the top anglers come down. Um, it's just a shame, really, the venues aren't fishing how we know they fish. Um, it improved a bit from other weeks, but I think if you take the skimmers out of the equation, there's not a lot of other fish. Um, I saw Polly holding a nice rod as well. Yeah, he had a bob nut, didn't he? Yeah. Two, pa- two punder. Was it? Said. Yeah, two pounder. Um, and he had a bream as well. Wow, skimmery, like two and a half. Mind pounds. you, he's so ickle. Anything looks bigger than he's holding. <laughs> <laughs> when he was here last week, I didn't realise until I did the editing. He's, he's tiny, isn't he? We should get him in a rugby team. <laughs> You wouldn't even know who's in it. It was like my little mannequin, I can say. <laughs> that may be his head. <laughs> but um yeah, so Sunday as as a whole the the drain fish better or river fish better than the previous week where people were starting a bit worried that there's no fish and there was fish to be caught all the way through, not big weights, you know, three, four pounds, five pounds, um, and the usual hotspot areas were for the fish. Um, not many roach, more like pommies or gusters, lots of like silvery bream and skimmers and an odd roach. Have they been perch. missing this year, the pommies? The pommies have, yeah, but so is everything. That's weird, because yeah. we thought the pommies actually just lived there, didn't we? We did, but they're just not feeding. There's a few fed Sunday. Um, so yeah, it, we'll start sort of A section, which is um, BMX track going towards the old coal yard bridge. So all of March is free fishing. Um, so anyone that wants to have a day's pleasure fishing or whatever, I'll 
the, the best areas are probably the easiest access areas anyway. You yeah. Know, parking behind the library and, and so forth. But A section fish better. I think poor old Gary Miller drew A1, which three years ago, two years ago, you'd be weighing in 20 pound and probably not even framing from that area. Uh, now you're weighing in two to three pound and it's good weight, but you still got it's still fish. Isn't that I mean? amazing how that's changed down there? Well, it is. It is we go through this every week, why and when, and we need this and we need that, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. But but they are, and then there's a few more fish just as you come in in towards the narrows, um, sort of eight and Let seven pounds. That's Mike's pain. There you go. Yeah, so sort of eight and seven pounds, and then as you get nearer to Wigston's Bridge. The weights just go up and up and up. Um, so from disabled pegs, I think Paul Bick had a ten pound, James Rack had fourteen pound, and then um, England international Matt Godfrey, um, nineteen pound. Uh, skimmers and a few odd roach. He was directly below Health Centre Bridge, and then above it there was sort of twelves, eights, tens, and then um, Mark Pollard. Um, who draws better than Anthony Watlin now. Uh, he rung me up in the week and gave me a load of grief. Don't you ever say <laughs> I draw better than Polly. <laughs> but this sums Polly up. Has Polly wound everybody up? Yeah, <laughs> it's Polly, isn't he? So um, get to the draw and I'm dishing bait out. People are going, where are you drawing? I'm thinking, oh, that's a good peg. Oh, there's not many high numbers coming out here. I ain't drawn yet. <laughs> then Polly goes, well, I've drawn peg 30. I'm like, it's the culvert. It's certainly the culvert. He went, yeah, I suppose that'll do. I'm for... He had the culvert? He had the culvert oh. peg, which is peg 30. Yeah. Anyway, I've done my draw, peg 60. Where's that? I think it's near the style. I think it's the style peg. Oh, it might be a few bites if you're there, you know. Anyway, Watlin's moaned at me, say, don't you ever tell me I draw better than Polly. He's gone, guess where um, Bob Fitzjohn's, Bob Fitztench is drawn? I said, I don't know. He goes, Polly's only drawing them 31, which is pig market corn. <laughs> yeah. So he's drawn 30 and 31 in the same day. Unbelievable. Best two pegs. They are, yeah. yeah. Probably won more money than any pegs on March. Well, you've got I the think. most room, <laughs> apart well, from the M yeah. pegs. Yeah, so they're, they're next to each other, but like a mile apart yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so... Polly paralysed it, all skimmers and rud and bits and bobs. And then, so going back right into the town centre, so underneath the town clock, right below the, the town bridge, um, 118, John Taylor, he had 18.8. He had some rud as well. Is this the, sw the swim that you fell down? No, they don't put that in anymore. <laughs> I don't know why. But um, <laughs> probably because I drew it, yeah. And then but I always draw bunghole. And then... Um, when you come down the steps, he was the end peg. Going, on the concrete? On the concrete, going towards Pig Market. Yeah. There was two pegs on Pig Market. Um, Tom Barlow, Barnsley Angler, he had 18 dead. I think he was just out of the frame. And then 118 um, had 18.8. And then there was sort of some more consistent weights. And the other side of the bridge on the concrete, near the acre there, near the library... Uh, there was um, Nick Crooks, another Barnsley angler. It's a good job it's not the Wintley final, as Barnsley would have absolutely paralysed it. Um, he had 20, £24 free, which was second in the match. Skimmers again? Uh, pommies and skimmers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, on bread. Nice start on bread, which is the nearer the town you get, the more rats you see, the more fish you catch, that's what I say. So he's caught on bread. Um, and then above him was Richie Reynolds, Dorkin angler, another brilliant angler. He's had 21.13. And then, like, it's just gone brick wall then. Eight, eight low weights. Um, and then as soon as you get near the health centre bridge, there was £11. Pound. Um, Dave Brooks had £14. Pound. And then it dropped back down again. And it's just like that in the same areas, you know, whether there's more cover or the usual spots, the weights just went like that. Yeah. Um, got past... Uh, opposite where you live, near the turning bay there, uh, coming on to peg 60 where I was. I thought, oh, do I need my waders today? If I'm on the style, I'll have a lovely, comfortable day. I've got a bit of room. I thought, oh, yeah, please be the style. I'm walking along. You know, in your head, you're thinking, what are you, mate? And you're thinking, oh, no. And then there's a little bit there just before the style where, depending Bob, how he pegs it, he puts certain ones in and sometimes he can leave them out and not and I thought 
I ain't going to be anywhere near the star. I'm, I'm here. I thought, oh, well. Like the week before, we had a, they had a bit of room there. In, that was in my section. So I thought, I'm not be too bad. And then I looked, and there's a, like, a rod bag just laying there and a load of buckets. And I thought, well, where's my peg then? And I was in between the two. So I was like, oh, no. Knowing that we'd had an absolute boatload of rain, it's not moved at all this year hardly i thought great i've got the shortest peg on the venue you can't swing a fish in i sound like someone else here <laughs> shortest peg on the venue i wasn't gonna S- say snag pit. and when i looked up and all i could see is floats in the tree above me and i thought <laughs> i'll go as far to my left as i can just to give myself a, a yeah. slightly little bit more because the more the more paces you have at March between you and the angler below you, the more fish you catch. And that's just how it is. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sort of, well, no one's turned up yet. So I'm getting my gear off and there's people like, oh, where are you drawing? Oh, yeah, that's no good. Oh, yeah, you know, it's like, you're like, oh, I can't believe this. I've drawn shit. Never mind. And then of all people, Lee Kerry rocks up next to me. So I'm like, oh, no, no. One of the, probably one of the top two anglers in the country. Do you know what I mean? He's like, oh. And he's five minutes, well, a bit more than that, eight metres away from me, ten metres away. So I'm like, no, nah, you don't need this. So started fishing. It was backing up to the left. I thought if it backs up to the left, I've got a bit more room to my left and I could perhaps draw some fish off. Well, the first 40 minutes were absolutely awful. I've caught nothing. There was no perch to catch like there normally is. Have the anglers either side of you caught? No. Um, Lee's probably had... He's probably got more fish. He's probably got seven or eight perch, and I've got two maybe, if that. And you're sort of thinking, right, okay, it's going to be like that. And um, I couldn't really see the guy below me, which is what we call the new peg, which is below the style, um, which has been a, it, the style and that have been they're either sat in the style peg or they're in that one, depending on yeah. what happens. Yeah. And um, after about an hour or so. Lee started getting some bites and making some bites and I'm thinking oh, I can't catch in the deep water I couldn't catch anything and um, I've gone long then and the pace is getting quicker and quicker and quicker and I'm thinking this ain't no good for me you know if it was if it was stood still or backing up I might have been alright but when it's flowing like that you're drawing from below you and the fish just come off the bottom and I'm thinking even though it's flowing I'm still loose feeding because they'll come and see it right among, like they'll come in your squats where it's landing probably say you're feeding there they'll probably only be half a meter down and sometimes you'll catch in your loose feed as well so even though you're only feeding three or four squats like as accurate as you can the fish still come up and yeah. they're off the bottom they're coming in and sorting your rigs out and the wind was bad oh you know. it was horrendous yeah the problem was it wasn't going the, the flow was fast but it wasn't as fast as it actually was because the wind was pushing it through because because i it was off your back but pushing from the left to right yeah because think, you're it? in the parrot cage you've got a willow tree that's oh sort of, i funnel it well no not that it's just every five minutes you've got a new snag in your peg so <laughs> me and lee were just like pulling in snags all day like where's that been it's not been there all day and now yeah. there's a snag um and then lee caught a skimmer he had one probably i don't know 10 12 ounce maybe I don't, probably that sort of size um, so I thought, oh, skimmers, we don't normally catch them here. And then sort of the peg seemed to liven up a little yeah. bit after an hour or so. And I started catching a few fish at 10 metres, loose feeding. And it was just, I don't know really, I, I couldn't catch any skimmers. Um, I felt that I was making some bites happen. And then all of a sudden that just, like I couldn't draw any more fish in. And you sort of trying different things, different depths, and I don't know. I just had a really frustrating day. The last hour and twenty minutes, I had two bites. I missed a bite, and I had but one, one little roach. Um, and normally, for me, they're, they're my best, best part of the match for me. You know, that's when I'm catching steadily, and other people's lines are dying, and I'm normally yeah. doing well, but. I don't know, it was just one of them days. The guy above me, I couldn't really see, but I could see him chipping out to this boat that he had with a bit of bread on, and I'm thinking, there's no way he's catching on bread. Anyway, he beat me as well. I didn't know, I didn't know the chap's name, but couldn't really see him, couldn't really hear him because of the wind. But So basically, I got a proper chip shop in. <laughs> what did you end up with? I had £3.4, which is the worst weight I've had at March for... 
well, I had three and a half pound the other week, but that one was section. But um, yeah, what not what, good. what did Lee have? Five twelve. And the guy this side, four four. Yeah. Uh, you see, Edge. have we lost him? It's probably Pete. Yeah, <laughs> probably fallen over something again. Um, me knowing you, you've got all these top class anglers coming down to your own patch. And I imagine part of you thinking, oh, yes, I draw. You want to do well, yeah. You do. Yeah, you do. it's personal pride and it's a competitive yeah, yeah, yeah. animal within you. And we haven't spoken about this beforehand. Yeah. So, but I, because that's how I am. Yeah. And it's when you draw an absolute crap area, it's a bit soldier's drawing because well, there's, there's not much you can do. It's not that. I don't know. What like it is? Say, I've, I you obviously no didn't do it right, but. You, know, you probably caught all you could catch on that peg. Joking apart, right, if you'd have been on an av- average peg with average distance, then the chip shopping would have been funny. But joking apart, when you explained to me earlier what you drew and how you had to fish it, mm. you, you, you're up to... The thing is, I think that peg wouldn't be in, even if it was had a bit more room and there's a few fish about. I don't think... It's, it plumbed up nice. Like, as the pegs go, I didn't realise how deep further across do you know what I mean when I plumbed up I, I, not that I fancied it I fancied it for a few bites if yeah, you know what I mean yeah. but the trees above you and stuff like that you couldn't you'd never be able to be in yeah. bagging mode do you know what yeah, I mean just yeah. you, you're playing a fish like with, like this cause, and you're thinking please don't come off please don't come off please don't come off because yeah. if that that comes off that's going straight <laughs> in the tree because yeah. you're just you're in a cage do you yeah. know what I mean and yeah You'd never be able to sort of, you're like this, even swinging in a little perch, you know what I mean? Like, but going back to what I was saying, if you'd have drawn one of the flies, you'd have loved it. Oh, there's fishing in it. Yeah. I've had my run, I've had, I've had yeah. my good, and yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. You know, that is match fishing. You, you have a little spell where you, like your years where you do mega, and then you have, well, hopefully not, two years where, um, you, you, you know, you, you just got to keep going and winning your section, and that's you know that's match fishing in general. But it is, yeah. The problem is though, afterwards you get so, oh. yeah, yeah. It's like last year when me and Eric on the WPC, we were second overnight. We'd done the hard bit. We'd had a really big competition pike. We'd had three crack, cracking zander, and we had we only needed three perch. But well, I'm not talking. I'm talking forty plus, forty mm. centimeter pluses, and I just. Went into the second day thinking, I'm lost now because I don't know how to target them. Whereas now I know. Mm. But I was, afterwards, I was so fed up with myself <laughs> because that, yeah. was, that was my own fault. Yeah, and I, I mean, it, yeah. And I, I, so I, I, really, I was really frustrated for days because yeah. I thought we should have won that. And it was my own inadequacies that meant we didn't win it because being the captain, I'm in charge of putting the boat in the right place. Yeah. And it's it's deflating because yeah. what you want to prove yourself against the best anglers. You, yeah, you do, and and that's you want to, in any match you want to do well, don't you? But yeah. for me, March has been you know I like catching roach and, and Alex. Stuff like if you that. ask any of the any of the good knowledgeable local match anglers, they all say the same thing. If Alex draws in March, no one can touch him. Well, they do. That's not yeah, that's good. any good angler really. But well, no, there's it, some who are better than others. The, the thing. The way it fished Sunday is the first time these skimmers are fed, really. Mm. And it was... The skimmers like a bit of room. and I mean, Lee's done mega to catch. I think he had he had two decent ones, and he might have had a couple come off, which his peg's the same. You're in, like... Do you know what I mean? You're, like, hairy, fairy rigs, and you're fishing so light for them and stuff like that. And to me, I just... I can't seem to catch these skimmers. I, I can't work out how to catch them. So the same, these top anglers come down and they always catch them. Well, that's the other thing I was going to say. And I'm like, isn't it it's in- all these top anglers catching them every week? But I don't know how to catch them. I don't know. You, something- you have to take a step back. Yeah. And then go again because what they're coming down about is with one tenth of the knowledge that you have of the venue. Yeah, but they 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 catch one and then they go and nail another one, and you're like. To me, they're a nuisance. Normally, <laughs> skimmers they get in the way of catching roach. But you know, all these top anglers come down and they just have a knack. Hemingway, all Sean Ashby, Cameron, Lee, all of them anglers will come down and they just catch them. Yeah. And I'm like, but they catch them from out of nowhere, and you're like, 
No one's caught skimming there before, but maybe know. you know too much. No, I think I think we know the venue as a roach venue. Yeah, and w- the way we fish, we're even we're aggressive, and well, I am. Um, I just like catching roach, and do you know what I mean? But to me, the skimmers are either up here above your feed, and they're so very crafty fish to catch. Even in the summer, if I sit at at mine in front of mine yeah. with a little pole rig, I can't. I can catch loads of skimmers, but what I do is I drop them on the bubbles. Yeah. When you put some bait in, they they won't sometimes go on the bait. They'll be three or four foot off it in the silt, but you'll see a bubbles come up. And I used yeah. to think they were tench or just rotten vegetation. No, they're skimmers about half to a pound. Yeah. You drop your rig right on top of the bubbles and the float will just go, mm. because it's in their face. You ever off the bubbles by six inches, you don't get a bite. It's really yeah. weird. And I've never seen that before with bream in particular get quite like they're like a herd of cows aren't they just come in but these skimmers are different these, these are different skimmers these mate. are like they're, they're, more, they're silver bream aren't they a but lot you of catch them one. hybrid they're a lot of them got hybrid in them and you gotta wait 10 minutes for them to come back yeah That's when everything. when there's quite a few of them and they're feeding you know but to me when i've caught them i've caught them you put some bait in and you catch a few roach and all of a sudden it goes quiet and you peg and you think, I know there's fish there, but why am I not catching it? And all of a sudden, you'll run it through and you'll get a real slow bite or a real fast bite. And you strike and it's either hooked here or it's hooked here or it's hooked here or it's hooked in the mouth. And, you know, you get them in and, you know, it's like 10 out skimmer. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's a bonus. And you go in again. And you might get another one if you're lucky, if you're on a few. And then everything else stops feeding on that line. But you know there's other skimmers yeah, there. Yeah, And... Half the time you put your rig in like that and you'll let it come back on itself and it'll it'll go on the drop and you think, oh, it skimmers in your peg. Normally you'd nail a little, you know, double pinky on the bottom and just ditch it through your peg, do you know what I mean? And you'd catch them like that. And you might get one like that, but then, but you know they're in your peg, but you just can't <laughs> yeah. catch them. Yeah, they're crazy. And then they're right down your peg, which yeah. when move. it's flowing, they're, they're right down your peg off the bottom. And you might feed and you might get one come in, but they come in and then they sit above your bait. And then it's like, you can't catch them again because they're above your bait or they're right down your bait. I've seen it on the camera as well, on the GoPro. Yeah. On your GoPro. On GoPro. You got one yeah. of them, man. Yeah. Oh, Steve. How about yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Oh, he, he, he said, he said, um, he'd come back afterwards and um, he said, how, how did it fish? And how did old mate get on, on opposite his house? And he said, oh, I thought he'd done better. He said, I've just looked on the camera and there's skimmers everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy, but I've I've seen them, and in the summer it's far easier to catch them because it's warmer and they're more, mm. they're, they, they're feeding harder. But they're buggers. They're I don't know really whether strange. it's the bottom, but I don't think it's the bottom. I just think it's the strain of fish that yeah. they are there. But you catch one and they, they do that as you've hooked it. And I think well, you it, hook them and it scatters and they, them. And you're like, is that a big roach or is it? And you sort of get back and then all of a sudden they go, oh, hang on a minute, I'm hooked. And they like, <laughs> yeah. go that way. And yeah. then they're trying to get like round your keep net. And yeah. you're like, oh, what am I doing here? I'm like, all right, clown. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they, they go just, mad. No, you hook skimmers anywhere else and you go, boom. And, and they, they go, go mm-hmm. boom. Yeah. But it's like different. You ship back and they just go, net them. But these things are fit fish, aren't they? Yeah, they're, I do wonder if they're... They've got some they're kind of def- hybrid. They're silver bream, aren't they, a lot of them? They don't, they don't look like normal, um, yeah. what I call pike fod. If I, was, if I was trying to find a new venue, like Drain, this is what I used to do. I used to go bream fishing on it in the summer mm-hmm. in different, and feed up real heavy because I used to try and work out what if there's any big bream shoals in there because that was always my way of starting with mm. the pike. And you get real big fen bream, six, seven, eight pounds. Nine pounds my biggest. Nine, six, I think, my biggest. They're clonking fen never, bream. never seen the bream that big. But you catch... Lots of one to two pounders on certain bits, and that's where I get excited from a pike fish and I think, mm. oh, pike fodder. Mm. But they've got a belly and they, they're rounder mm. compared to these things, are more streamlined. They are, they're a lot thinner, aren't they? Yeah, and they look they look like bream. And to be fair, the biggest ones are <coughs> actual hybrids, the but, ones that are like pound and a half sort of size. They are, but the, like Polly had one proper one, two pound or whatever it was. That's crazy, that just can't work out what's. But have you noticed how much slimy they are? They're yeah. a different type of... They're weird. Yeah. They're like a bar of soap just slimy. Just typical Fenland creature, aren't they? <laughs> just hybridised. A spot being near them. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. Have you seen him? I'm not I sure. haven't seen him for ages. No. But, um... I saw him about three months ago. Yeah. Uh, we were, our, our vehicles were passing, and I just saw this... Yeah, you often see him in March through town. This grin. All right, mate? Yeah. 
So yeah, I got royally chip shot basically, um, and then moved through going down the drain or the river um, where I thought it was. It was hard through there as well, sort of four pounds won that section I think four pound one, four pound two, and then um, Grand Smith won the next section with eight pound. He had some big skimmers, um, but it was noticeable all the pegs with a bit more room caught these skimmers. Um, all the way through really, or if there was an empty peg below you, that had a big difference, massive difference on weights. Um, and then as you get past the windmill, um, there was a five pound, I think, so I'm not sure one is section with a five pound. It fished, not amazing, but steady, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was a lot better, yeah. odd skimmers. And when the weights are that tight, one or two skimmers is, is you know, is a major difference. Yeah, it was an extra pound. Between yeah. three pound and five pound, six yeah. pound. So when it's like that, you need to know how to catch these skimmers. Normally, it's like a skimmer, oh, yeah, that's a nice bonus, can on catch any ropes, do you know what I mean? They don't, they're not what hook bait they catch on squat? Or? Uh, I think pinkies is Pinky. probably your best hook bait. You do catch them on squats as well. Um, Such delicate feeders, I'd imagine. They don't, it's like they don't want to feed on the bottom. They're yeah. all off the bottom. But everything's off the bottom at the minute. It's even them good ropes, they're either, you either catch them on the bottom or you catch them right off. Yeah, so, I think the water quality is really down. Again, talking to Stephen, yeah. Oggy, Paul, Pogo, um, about the effluence. Hasn't the chance to be washed out because there's no flow. I, do want, I don't know, we, I have no answers, just lots of questions. Yeah. Um, so, all in all, not too bad a match. Very peggy still. Yeah, but this March, it, even when you catch big weights at March, it's the same areas dominate. Whether yeah. you're fishing for £5 or £35. Yeah. It's no different. It's winter fishing. Yeah, yeah. Winter fishing. But, so um, all in all, was it, it was a good open then? Yeah, good open. I think the next one is um, the 20th of Feb, which is just like as, a, as an official winter league practice. So I think there's like each team's got an allocation of five, five pegs if they want to. But on the same day, there's an open match on Benick and the 20 foot, which is Stan Jay run that. And they had one on Saturday. I think there was 60 odd fishing so they put like three sections yeah uh they put obviously one to 15 and they did 22 to uh probably 32 i think it was so one to 15 is obviously bennick in the town 22 to 31 is what we call as little london which is there's some boats and a house and a tree and just a bit better it goes to a bend and then they left a little gap and then they fished Apney Toll back, which is like the top end. Yep. Now, normally this time of year, you would not even entertain even looking at that up there. But for whatever reason, the weights weren't big, but everyone caught fish. There were, I think five pound might have won it, someone might have caught a tench. Um, they caught nothing for like an hour, then all of a sudden, start catching perch, and then perch start feeding, the roach start feeding. And it was it's fours and threes and twos. It, I mean, that sounds shocking weights for what we're used to, but there's fish up there. It's quite fair. You know, if you do yeah. it right, there's a method to it. And it's nice, consistent fishing. So um, that fished quite well. I think there was a did couple you, of... Did you fish it on the side no, you were here, no, were you? No, no, <laughs> um, no. So there was like a couple of seven pounds, but lots of five, six pounds, which is tight, you know. It is tight. Um, and then the 20 foot, they put... 12 pegs on there i think what at the um, footbridge at the footbridge in the same match no they paid they paid that differently right obviously because but the same i think last place on on the 20 foot was 12 pounds <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that says it all really doesn't it good god um but i think um young lad from thatcher's garrite Powell, i think his dad come in the shop and got some bits and bobs and he said oh he's drawn above the bridge i was like all oh, right mega peg Mega pay. He had thirty. I mean, in that wind as well, thirty-two pound. Like, did, did he use a Daiwa Connoisseur whip? Mm, possibly. I hope so. Yeah. That's the whip peg. Yeah, they're all whip pegs. <laughs> they're all whip pegs. Um, and then there was um, loads of other weights as well. You know, eighteens, twenties. Good fishing. Yeah. So, um, so that was Saturday. Um, so it's sort of hotting up a bit at the minute for the Winter League. I've just realised. Have I cut you out of the camera this week? Yeah, you probably have. That's what I'm saying. You, I, I was over here when we started, but it's probably the best place for me. Um, I've just realised. <laughs> if you haven't seen Alex, it's, it's weird. You look like you're massive. I am massive. 
I just realised what we're doing. Anyway, sorry, I've stopped, stopped you in full flow. That's all right. Um, so yeah, Wintley's hotting up. Um, we've got the Hage out this Sunday. Not sure what venues they're using. Probably the same. So it'll be Benick and um, uh, and uh, and um, March. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, it fishes a bit better. Um, and then Wednesday we had a match on the twenty foot. Um, I'm not running one this Wednesday because the RF have booked it, but we'll probably do another one next Wednesday. Pegged it a bit different. Um, Dave Lee was the peg that won the match on the Saturday. He had thirty-six pound. Graham Welton, who's very consistent on there, especially on them rods. He He's likes it there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he had thirty-eight pound. Was he uh, using his own floats? Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. He likes those as well. Yeah. Perfect for there. Yeah, they are, yeah. And then um, I was third with 32. Oh, where did you draw? Next to the bridge. Did you double bank it? Yeah, so we pegs where I drew the week before, I was sat on the opposite bank, opposite side of the bridge. So we put two pegs there, and then Dave Lee was sort of he on the board. It looked like he was next to me, but he wasn't. He was opposite Graham Welton. So we went one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, so one, one and two were the other side. Yeah. Peg three was in between one and two. No, peg three was on roadside, but the first peg next to the bridge. Ah, oh, okay. To the right of the bridge, yeah. so the opposite side where was we yeah. before. Yeah. And then obviously we pegged the rest in a row there, and everyone caught loads of fish, which was good. Wind was horrific again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just stuff full of fish. I can only see that getting better as well. I think there's more anglers spread the bait about a bit. At the minute, everyone's fishing for rudd because that's you do a bigger weight yeah. of rudd than you do of everything else. But there might be a few roach start feeding um, a bit further away from the bridges. We'll see. Who knows with the 20 foot? Anything could turn up with there. You could all of a sudden catch some tench. You just I was going to say, know. tench there it used to be a bit further upstream. Yeah. If we get to Hobbs Lot, that gets really weedy, doesn't it? And that's yeah. always held a lot of tench. Yeah. 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 So. Who knows? But they haven't been there for a couple of years. But haven't they? No, no. Um, but we'll see. Um, so we'll do. We'll see Saturday series. Yeah. Um, they was at. We'll see. Jeff Tuttleby needs to come and get some stickers to go along with the trophy. Yeah, Sarsons and Sacks. Is it or something? Yeah, the Sarsons. Yeah, and um, that's my new sponsor, by the way. Which one? Both. <laughs> you are salt and vinegar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, um, Does Jeff know that you've nicked his sponsors? No, Jeff. Jeff. Um, well, yeah. I think I. Well, who makes? Um, you call him Paxo. Paxo. That's <laughs> isn't that like? That's a stuffing. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> so Paxo, if you've been stuffed. stuffed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, safe to say I will not be visiting the chip shop this week. I've had enough of chip shopping. Um, so, Saturday series, they were on Wiltsy Dyke, which is, or back of the carpet city or carpet world. Um, tough going, but c- close. Um, Mel Saggers won it with £1.10. Runner up was Jeff, £1.7. Then 118 had £1.6 and a half. Oh, I love a half. So, yeah. Jeff beating well, by scales half bouncing. an ounce. Yeah. I wonder who's on the scales. <laughs> <laughs> Probably someone that likes Jeff better than John, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But, um, and then... Uh, How many fish did John Taylor have? Oh, he would have had a lot for that there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. One, two, miss a few. 120, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, Andy Lawrence had one pound, four and a half. Um, Another half? Yeah. Oh, so, in that wind. I know, well, that's unreal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know... <laughs> And so that was Saturday, Matt. I'm not sure where they're going this Saturday. I don't know if they're going to Beggars or where they're going. Um, so that was we'll see match. Well done, guys, for braving the conditions. Yeah, yeah. Know, every think. week, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Ramsey. So Wednesday there was at St Mary's. And Is Keith organising these? Old Colgate, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, winner of Wednesday and... Has anyone been in touch with you like, since you explained it? What? <laughs> no, about Colgate. About oh, why sponsored by him, yeah. yeah. Uh, Colgate, Keith, uh, didn't frame this week. <sighs> he didn't draw his peg one. He normally does. Yeah. Um, but I thought, I thought he kept that in his pocket before he took it out at the beginning. 
But um, match winner on Wednesday and Sunday was none other than Mark Williams. And uh, he is the uh, diver. He's the diver. That's his nickname. <laughs> He's the one that went in on the Oh, foot. Mark. Yes. yes. Next yeah. to you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, he was um, practising for the Olympics. He was, yeah. yeah. Straight in. Swan diving technique. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on down there? Um, yeah, so he won both Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday... Joking uh, apart, he seems like a really nice bloke. He is sound, yeah. yeah he's spot yeah. on. Yeah. Um, £18.12, Mark had. Um, Runner-up was Stewie Cheatham, £18.7. Third was Kev Malt, 17.15. And then David Steele, £16. Where's Benjamin? Uh, well, I'm just coming on to that. <laughs> it seems like, now that David's got a new whip, which is a connoisseur whip... Um, he's beating Benjamin every week. So David's his brother? Yes. So Benjamin's getting thrashed by, by his, brother his brother with a whip. Yeah. Only in Finland. Yes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do they come from Chatteris? No, they're oh, no, right. stand ground, I think. So he's sort of Peterborough's equivalent, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then Sunday... Um, oh. Mark won with 10 10. Uh, Mr. Cast the Plant had £7.12, <laughs> and then Dave Normal £6. But it's amazing the weight difference between Wednesday and Sunday. How, like, it's condition, weather conditions, well, it must it's got to be the wind, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, presentation. Frost, frost again, wasn't there? We've uh, had strange morning. weather. Frost yeah. this morning, yeah. Yeah, sharp one. Yeah. I don't know if you were up early enough to witness that frost, eh? Uh, yeah, it was this morning. Yeah. yeah I just, Mm. As I get older, it takes me forever to get going. Yeah. Um, Unless I'm fishing. So, and that was again at St Mary's. So, it's like normally they're fishing Factory Bank and now is mixing it about a bit, but they're not. They're just fishing St Mary's and it's been good fishing. Yeah. So, well, they keep going, they keep sorting it out, don't they? They do. Surprised you didn't go last Wednesday and try and take money off the OAPs. No, no. Like no? I say, I was. On the 20th, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you're going to sh- getting bad. But you've still got the best peg again. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. I think we yeah. need to have a steward's inquiry. Well, Graham Welton drew it for me this week. Did he? Yeah. And you both drew next to each other. Yeah, well, so he drew, fun, funny, he drew peg one and peg two. It was quite weird that... So you want Polly or Graham drawing for you? Or John Taylor. Or John Taylor, yeah. Yeah. Usual suspects. Um... But it was noticeable under that bridge. That, I mean, I caught 30, 32 pound. And I had a lot of fish, like you need there. But my fish were mainly roach, bleak, pommies. Pommies? Yeah, and perch, oh, all shit. two foot deep. And a few rud. I don't, don't get me wrong, I had a few rud as well, but not not like Graham and um, Dave Lee. That they, they caught nice... Dumpy rud. You know, they, they, they caught quickly, but... Well, they closer to the bridge. No, I was uh, literally a troll, mate. I was like... Oh. <laughs> That's how tight a I troll. was to it, yeah. And I, re- I thought... But when you look from the bridge to the other side, there's like a big concrete plateau that goes out. And I think where I was, it just... For whatever reason, then rud didn't want to be sat there. They wanted to be... Whether yeah. it was because they were an end... Or just because of the shadow, or what, for whatever reason, you know what rudder like. I mean, we've fished matches on Chainbridge, for example, and you double bank it. This was probably four years ago now, five years ago, and everyone who sat on the roadside caught roach, and everyone who sat on the in the sun, in no, out of the sun, oh, out of the sun, caught roach. So roadside would be with the sun in your face. Uh, yeah. Honestly, everyone on this side literally caught an odd one or two, and everyone on this side caught twenty-five pound plus of rudder. And I think Ali caught forty pound, and Gav caught thirty, thirty pound next to the bridge. All on that side. Yeah, this side, all roach. Do you know what? I'm going to tell you something there. This is weird. So I've done a bit of rud bashing. I like to oh, get the big ones. Mm. I've not had a three pounder yet, but I've got close. Now what did I? The sun had a. This is summer fishing, so mm-hmm. it's different. The sun had a massive impact on them, as in which margin I would find them on in yeah. the morning or the evening yeah, yeah. and I can't, I can't remember which way around it is now yeah. but I think it was the opposite to what you're finding now I think they like the sun on their backs when it was really hot right. the big ones 
but not... I can't remember, it, I, I have to go rod fishing again to work yeah. it out. There was a definite correlation between the position of the sun and the shadow, yeah. and one margin was always better than the other one, morning or afternoon. Mm -hmm. On this particular drain, it was, it, the drain runs perfectly. The sun hits both banks throughout the day, mm. if that makes sense. So you get a shadow on one side and the other. But I can't remember which way round it was now. I can't remember if it was the shadow. I think it was the heat they ride. I can't remember. But it was crazy. It was all the rud were always on one side of the bank, not on the other. It's weird, isn't it? It is weird. Very it, strange. It has a massive effect on them. But these are the things that you have to learn if you want to be a good angler. All these little things mm. make a massive difference. Yeah. Right, shall I go weigh in, Fleet? Bowtown. This is river steeping, though, isn't it? So, this is Derek now. As we say, Wayne Fleet, not. Wayne Fleet. Somebody sent a message. Yes, Wayne Fleet. Yeah. yeah, I did see that. First time I've actually looked at any of the messages. <laughs> it's it was quite funny. Okay, so Derek sent this in. This is the winter series, and this was round five of six. So, this would be yesterday. Yes. Yes. Uh, first on peg 24 was Dave Dean with 1010. Second on peg six was Beanie Sawyer. No, I like that name. The guys were mentioning Beanie. They said he's a really good... What style of fishing is he really good at? Is he the bread punch guy or is that Derek? No, that's Derek. Is it? Yeah. So, Stephen, Oggy, Paul, Pogo... Yeah. ...said all these guys had a reputation for being... Like Derek was, is a fantastic bread punch fisherman. Yeah. Beanie is like... Is, they said... I, I should have written it all down. Yeah. They've told me so much info. You've got Alec Rawlins, the, the waggler man. Big Dong, Stamp. Dong, well, Stampy, Big yeah. Stamp was the guy they bet their house on to catch them a fish. Yeah, yeah. Mick Stamp, sorry, Beanie Sawyer came second with 10.8. Mick Stamp, put your life on him to catch you something, yeah. was £8.12. Steve Miles was £6.14, fourth place, sorry. Um, fifth place was Mark Cook with £6. And six equal was Nathan Watson and Dennis Houghton with, with £5.06. Um, so the match was split into sections. Section one was Dave Eastwood with £4.12. Section two was Nathan Watson and Dennis Houghton. Section three was Alec Rawlings with 4 5 yep. And section four was Mark Cook. Uh, after five rounds, with the worst result dropped, Dave Dean's in first place with eight points. Mick Stamp is second with nine points. Don Green is third with 11. Steve Miles is fourth with 12. Nathan Watson is fifth. Fifth with 12 points as well, so they're equal, sorry. Yeah. And Kev Wilson is sixth then with 13 points. Level with Beanie Sawyer. So it's very right. tight. Yeah. Um, Mick, sorry, Derek. Oh, I got his names mixed up. Derek's then sent me another message saying that he had just under £10 of decent roach in less than three hours on the Friday off peg nine and a couple of pegs away. Today on the Sunday, he could only manage £1.8. So going to your St Mary's mm. results, it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. That on the fr during the week when it was kinder, it does it does make a massive difference. What's it's going warm on. Wednesday, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot warmer. This was Friday. He smashed the roach. Yeah. A lovely bag of roach. He sent me a picture of here. And then Sunday and all that wind, people struggled more. So Derek, thanks for those. Keep sending those through. That's fantastic. Glad we can help out up there as well, up north. <laughs> yeah. Up north. Oh dear. Soon right. As, I always say, as soon as you get to Whole Beach, they start speaking a different twang, don't they? Whole Beach is north. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of a, a Lincolnshire twang when you yeah. get up there. What are your plans for this week? They've got a the match on Wednesday. Match? No, 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 no uh, match Wednesday. Um, are you going to join the Ramsey boys? No, not this week. Um, don't know, to be honest. Uh, and then Sunday's Ajax. So, are you winning that? Uh, team is, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the March team are doing well. They're second as well. So, got to you give know. your dad a mention. He did all right on Sunday. He came second in his section. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Did you get any money for second in your section? Uh, no. no, no. So we didn't um, buy the pizza this week. No, brother did. Has Dev calmed down a bit from Vangate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh, I'm going to watch rugby on Friday. Tigers. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a rugby fan. I wouldn't say I'm a Tigers fan. I bought a hat because I was freezing when we went to watch him. But I think if I had to support anyone at the minute, I'd probably be a Harlequins fan just because I like the way they play rugby. But we're going to watch Northampton v. Well, 
Leicester v Northampton, so <sighs> Derby. Derby crunch match. Yeah, it's a shame really. Six Nations on, so the you know all the superstars ain't there, but it'll still be good. I enjoy enjoy it and looking forward to that. I was pleasantly surprised, um, Mr. Welling. I was, yeah, he took me to see Queen Saracen before Christmas, and I was I loved it. Mm. It was it, I'd rather go and watch that than international now, just because of the ease of getting to to the ground, yeah, getting around the ground and getting home again. Whereas I haven't been to the international for about four or five years, but it costs you probably a hundred quid a ticket, mm. plus your transport. And just getting hold of a ticket international is mental, <sighs> isn't it? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but no, the rugby's a good, good watch, isn't it? It's good, and you get a nice crowd there as well. Yeah, the, I'm not sure about the, the, the Tigers, Tigers. <laughs> it's a bit poor. <laughs> they really. need a better song, don't they? Yeah, yeah. but well, they were sort of saying, Gloucester, <laughs> Gloucester. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's the same, just the name. It's like poor. <laughs> like that's the only difference between like a football match and rugby match. But you know, I did watch the second half of Forest Leicester yesterday in the FA yeah. Cup, and yeah. you could hear quite clearly over the mics what the crowd was singing. Yeah, it was brilliant. I can't yeah. repeat it now. No, but no. They were, no, it's different atmosphere. They were, they? The Forest fans were very derogatory towards Leicester. <laughs> East but Midlands it, Derby, but it, it did make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's fun. It's nothing. Well, yeah. No, it's all a bit of fun. Right, mate. So, everybody, keep doing your thing. Keep giving us uh, some feedback. I know it sounds like I'm banging the same drum, which I am, but keep giving us a thumbs up. Send us a message if you know anybody that's doing something fishing wise and needs it promoting. Get in touch with us. Get them to get in touch with us, and we'll promote it through the podcast. Yeah. Fisheries, get in touch with us when you've got events on. We will publicise it. It's not t- just tackle and baits mm. and rookery waters. We don't care. It's all about spreading the word. We'll only charge you with tenner. That was joking. And finally, some of you guys need to man up. Come into the shop. See Alex. Get your specials. There's one bloke's name written right on first on the list, and he knows who it is. Come and get your special sticker. Yeah. Yeah, and wear it with pride. Right, buddy, should we draw it to a close? Yes, please. Bad Th- enough for being talking about being chip shot. You have. Well, thanks to Alex for your time. Thanks to his Wilson friend as well. Oh, this is wor- Wilson. This worries me. I'm going to have nightmares about this tonight. Everybody have a great week's fishing. This has been Tales from the Tackle Shop, a Fenland Fishing TV production. Where do you find that shit from? <laughs>